Guys, Alex here from Homeschool of Bel Air. On today's video, I'm going to give you guys a more in-depth and closer look into my art area. I'm also going to be sharing with you guys a couple of the resources I've used in the past and some that I'll be using this year. If you're interested to see what I've got going on for art, stay tuned. So I don't know that this is going to be a little series in my YouTube channel, but I kind of want to give you guys closer looks into different areas in my schoolroom. I definitely wanted to start with art because art is one of those things that I get a ton of questions on on my Instagram. So I want to make sure to have something where I can kind of guide people to. So if I do get questions on certain things, resources where I'm getting certain of my some of my um, art projects from, I can kind of just guide you guys to my channel to this video and hopefully this will answer everybody's questions okay so before i start sharing some of the resources that i have here for you guys um i just want to let you guys know also i am going to be taking the camera and showing you guys my art area and some of the art supplies that we probably use the most and some that i would recommend along with some that are probably just easier to work with and little techniques to make it even funner and easier so i like to leave things out for my kiddos to just have free access to I obviously have things locked up in my closet that they do have to ask permission first before grabbing them. But I do feel like I leave plenty of things out for them to mess around with. I'm going to go ahead and just start show by showing you guys some of the books that I've used in the past. Okay, so these are some that I used. This one here I actually used my first year of homeschooling. These two books here are actually art curriculum from public school systems. This one here is actually part of the Harcourt Company. This one I'm not sure what it is, what company put it out but it was used in a school setting. Now this one here is a first grade level and then this one here is a second grade level. So I'm gonna show you a little bit inside. This here, Art Express, like I said, is the one that we used our first year homeschooling. So Adrian was about four, Vincent was about six or seven, probably more closer to seven, I would say. And uh, we used this with no problems. Now I did have to help Adrian just a tad bit more than I did have to help Vincent. But the lessons are super simple. There's 36 lessons in this book. And we did this book from start to finish. So let me show you guys. So the first thing they tell you to do is to just kind of create a little art sketchbook. And then let me show you the first lesson. So the first lesson is all about lines. And it gives you a little, um, pretty much like a little thing for you to read to your student or for your student to read if they are in the reading level. Give you some art here to basically, not necessarily study, but it talks about the different artists and how they use lines. And it gives you a little bit of information on the work of art. And then it gives you examples as to where or how you see different lines in nature or wherever. And then it gives you your in the studio area. And this is basically the art project. And it kind of gives you a little information as to what you should be doing. See how it goes. Lesson number two is lines, lines show movement. So this would be um, just a gradual from this lesson. You move, uh, gradually move to this lesson where the lines have to show motion so uh, obviously here's your in the studio area for the art project um, so as you guys can see the art projects are pretty simple so this would be your like henry matisse style of art and so it just kind of goes on it does give you um it does feature certain artists in the style that they fall in this is the self-portrait area let me see you have color value, so it gives you an art project on using color in different ways. And multimedia, so it gives you an uh, area to build a mask. This book also, I believe we did, um, if I remember correctly, I want to say we combined, I combined the two for that first year. But these are great books. This one is laid out a little bit differently. It does give you the in-the-studio kind of area where you create your little project. Um, I just like the way this book was laid out a little better because it was laid out more in a lesson style. So we can go lesson by lesson a little easier than with this one. We did use this one a lot for references though. So that is um, what this book looks like on the inside. And again, if I can find it, I will link it in the description box. So let me go ahead and give you guys a little peek into this one. So it's laid out um, slightly different. What I like about these two is that if even if you just want to do an art study, you definitely can using these books. So there is that. Okay, so the other book I wanted to show you guys is this one, if you have a child that likes to work with multimedia. So this is the big book of painting and sticking. So this one is more using different things. Um, I remember the first year of homeschooling, I did use this one and we used it on Earth Day. 
and we ended up actually gathering trash and then we created projects something similar to that where we used all the different items that we found to create our art project so that is what this one is you see how this one you use rocks and rope or string and then cardboard these were a lot of fun so then the other one this is more i would rec i would say more of a art study this one here is the Usborne, the Children's Book of Art. And we sometimes use this one just to look at the art. It tells you about the artist and it probably tells you a little bit as to how to make something similar to that. So again, this one isn't really a art curriculum per se, but it's definitely more for art study. The one that Evelyn is actually getting into right now is the handprint animal art book. This one here I found at a thrift store and it's for ages four to 10. And it's just using your own hand to make little animals. Um, I believe there's some, yeah, it's like handprints, fingerprints. And it's really cute. And again, this, I would say, if you have a preschooler and you just want them to do little handprints and things like that, it's actually pretty cute. Then this is one of my most recent purchases, and I'm really glad that I found it at Savers for $1.29. And it's more of an art study. This year, I want to do more of an art, like a artist study curriculum so I might be using this as a reference for a couple of different things but I like that it talks about the artist it talks about uh, basically their technique and then it gives you instructions as to how you can recreate something close to what they worked on um, it does give you a little difficulty level on top and uh, scissors if you're going to need them so it does give you a little art supply now this one isn't as colorful as the other one so it might be boring for younger kids but it's always great to just have as a reference I think So now, so now another good thing to have around for kids if you want to even just begin, even if you don't want to just have like an art curriculum, is just having journals, art journals. So this is my oldest, uh, my oldest son's art journal, the Rectus Journal. And what I like about it is that it makes him step out of his comfort zone. He's very much just into drawing. And this has made him step out into more of a multimedia kind of way, uh, way of doing art. Um, so he really enjoys this book. Um, I don't know who this is. I think this is Evelyn's. Me, a compendium is another one. This is really great for anybody just beginning. Because even if you don't want to follow a art curriculum per se, you can just do a page a day and just maybe bring out some paints, markers, and just have them go at it. Um, we do art once a week. We do it on Fridays. So this is actually for Evelyn. This is She does this just to keep busy. So it's not necessarily... A, we're not using it for actual art art it's just her keep busy journal but you can definitely use it as like an art journal if you have like I said a more of a beginner and you don't have something to follow it does give you plenty of space to really get creative now for Fridays now for instead of a uh, drawing rights we're doing directive drawings and we're really enjoying it just anything as simple as this can be really great for little kids so what we do is we work from this book and then the kids just kind of follow along and do their little um, directive drawing. So if you guys have seen my video on my, my curriculum picks, this is another great resource and I'm so glad I found this book this year. This is the Draw and Paint Print like Great Artist. And this book, what I like it, because I mentioned we're going to be doing more of an artist study this year. It features 18 different artists and their techniques. And then obviously it gives you plenty of practice pages for you to try your own. What I'm planning on doing with this, and I think I mentioned it before, is for every week, at the end of the week, for every artist, we're going to do one big project. So throughout the week, I'm going to have them do their little practice pages. We're going to squeeze it in probably after lunch, talk about the techniques. And then, like I said, on Friday, we're going to go ahead and do the big project and then go ahead and move on to the next artist. So that's kind of how I'm hoping to use this art book. I don't know that it'll take us the whole school year. It might. We might finish it even before that. But I'm very excited with this book. It is so colorful and great. The pages are pretty thick. They're, um, they're um, I would probably say in between, not necessarily a cardstock, but not a little thicker than maybe construction paper. So I'm definitely excited to be using this this year. Okay, so let's talk about Deep Space Sparkle for a minute. This is something that we used this past year for art lessons, and the projects are so much fun. If you click on Select by Grade Level, you find different art projects stemming from kindergarten all the way to sixth grade. 
I like to just kind of look through all of them and see what I think will be fun. I sometimes even go through seasonal projects. So let's go over to the kindergarten level so I can show you some of the projects that are there. So if you scroll down, you're going to find all these different art projects. This one here is one that we did last year, and it was such a fun project. So she gives you how much time it's going to take you. On some of them, she even offers video tutorials. I usually like to go for those. Some of them, she gives you a click to download freebie. Always click on those because she'll give you a ton of resources to use. Okay, guys, so if you guys have been following me for a while, you guys know how I feel about Art with Trista. This is one of my favorite YouTube channels for art resources. One, it's completely free, and she does step-by-step -step tutorials on so many different art projects. You can pretty much look for anything, and you'll find it on Art with Trista. So one of my favorite things about Art with Trista is that it's on YouTube, and you could easily just press pause if she's going too fast for you. But it's so easy to follow along with her art projects. So now I'm going to show you guys some of my favorite art supplies. So one of the first things I want to talk about is these little paints here. These little paints are actually, um, these particular ones are the crazy art ones, but I know Crayola makes them. They're very easy to wash and I like to keep them on the table because sometimes if we just need to paint something quickly or I don't want to bring out the watercolors and all that good stuff, these are just super easy to use and they're really easy to wash off. Um, another thing I like to keep here is our little scroll from Ikea. I did uh, stain it, so it's a little darker than what you normally find at Ikea. But I always like to keep this roll of paper here because it makes it also for easy, for quick little art projects or even just to roll this out to keep our table clean. Okay, now here on this little collax unit that I have by the window um, next to the table, I also like to leave out... Um, just color pencils, and these are the cheapy. These are the little Crayola ones. Some Crayola markers, our larger Crayola markers, and some daubers, just to have them easily accessible for the kids if they feel like they want to just draw. Another thing next to this, I also have a full stash of construction paper. Evelyn loves using this construction paper for pretty much anything she uses. Um, this is just something that I like to have usually pretty fully stocked. And then she has her little glitter pens here and just a little thing of crayons. So if she feels like she wants to be a little creative. Okay. So now that brings us into our little art shelf. This is all, um, free for the kids to kind of come and grab whatever they need. It's, I made it super easily accessible for all of the kids, including myself. So it's easy for us when we have an art project, we know what to get, where it's at, and it's pretty easy to find. So I'm going to start at the top. So the top shelf, I would say, is more of my shelf. This, the kids do know that they do have to ask in order to grab anything from this area. So let me start from the back corner. So back here, I have my big tub of Indian ink. I have a bunch of paint brushes. We have better ones that we use for more like watercolor. And then we use these for more like the tempura paints. And I'll show you guys all those. And then these, um, same thing. We just kind of use them more for just um, pretty much anything. Back here in this little tub, I have some of my Indian ink. And let me try to see if I can open it. Okay, so I put Indian ink inside these little daubers. And these are for a lot of different art projects. It actually makes for really good um, drawing. I don't know if you guys see this art. The black area back here was done with this little dauber thing. And these are so great to have. This is our first year with them. And we absolutely love doing art projects with those. I already have four pre-filled. The pack that I got of these daubers was like a 12 pack. I just filled up four of them because usually it's just the four of us doing the art up here. So let me go ahead and put that back. Inside this other plastic bin, I just have a bunch of spatulas. This is more of what I would say is more like a clay work bin. This is where we keep a lot of the clay tools. This back here are just a bunch of crafting scissors. Evelyn loves using these, but she tends to misplace scissors quite a bit. So she does have to ask me whenever she wants to get any of these scissors. Back here, I also have some glue, and we have all sorts of glue. We have Mod Podge. I also have a little bit of baby oil. Baby oil is a great tool to have, especially if you work with oil pastels. You could actually, when you draw with oil pastels, if you take a little bit of baby oil with Q-tips, it makes it look like paint. So that is a quick little tip, guys, if you guys are trying to do something like a painting, but easier for little hands. Baby oil, and I'm gonna see if I can give you guys an example. 
So this art project here was done with oil pastels and then we took, we painted all of this with oil pastels and then we take baby oil with the tissue and we rubbed it and it made it look almost like paint. So that is that tip I was talking about. Okay, so I also have a two bins. This bin here is some just artist. It's called, the company's called Art Skills. I found them on clearance at Walmart. And these were, I can't remember. I think I got them for like $3 and it was a big pack of these art dual sided uh, coloring pens. So that, and then I have a couple of white ones. Here we have Sharpies. We tend to use Sharpies a lot for art projects. And I recently got a new pack because the pack I bought last year um, was completely missing. So I bought some large ones and then regular Sharpies. Again, we use these a lot for art. So now it brings us into a little Arteza area. I like to keep our watercolor real brush pens here with the water. I also have a little sprayer with water because we tend to use this usually all together. Um, I like to leave them pretty accessible because sometimes the kids when they're doing... Um, their new science journaling they like to use these quite a bit i also have our uh, color pencils here our arteza drawing pencils and then our watercolor uh coloring color pencils so all of that is here so the next shelf down this is more of the crafting area i would say we have the perler beads we have some uh plastic rope these are just like other little sponge type tips down there is just tissue paper all from the Dollar Tree. Back here, I do like to usually keep these in stock all the time because sometimes for certain art projects, we just need something that can be thrown away after. So I like to keep, and there's a bunch of them back here. And then just some rods. We needed we needed some of these dowels for, um, I forgot a project we did. So we just have a couple of them here, or a couple packs, actually two packs. And uh, some of the little cheapy paintbrushes that I got through Amazon. These are some that Evelyn can use whenever and um if we need to throw them away we also use these for mod podge also because then sometimes the mod podge we don't have to worry about cleaning them we just throw them away in this little bin here we just have the crayola watercolor paints and a few of these scrapers that we use for a lot of different art projects here is where i have anything for creating so basically for painting little um these little trays cups if we need to get acrylic paint I don't like to use these for acrylic paint because they tend to, we sometimes let them dry and uh, it takes a little longer to wash. So anytime we use any kind of acrylic paint or anything like that, I like to use the cups. I also have some double-sided tape and some little art clips to just kind of clip our paper if we need to. And then on this side, I do have some of these little blank books from the Target Dollar area. Um, you'd be surprised if you just leave little art books laying around. Sometimes the kids just kind of grab them. I found a few little drawings in some of them. So it's just great to have. Up here, I have some little, um, just little stampers. You can use them with either paint or uh, stamping ink. Here we just have a bunch of the little um, pom-poms. And then these are just uh, some of these little shapes that are those uh, foam shapes. Up here, I have a whole little container of googly eyes in different sizes. And this is a little, just craft tools. We have um, rope or twine, another little sprayer, some tape. And then these little uh, pegs. We My son likes to make a lot of puppets with these. And then I just threw in some paper clips. Sometimes we use paper clips to draw like circles and things like that. Here we have some glitter and um, I need to, usually I know when to restock stuff, but the glitter, my daughter has been making a huge mess with the glitter. So I don't know if I'll be restocking this in a while. Then we have some popsicle sticks and then more popsicle sticks. Let me put this all back. So here we have some of the paint sticks. If you guys haven't used these paint, paint sticks, these are great for younger kids. It's basically like a tempura paint in a little stick form. And it is so easy to just manage the mess with these. And I love when my daughter uses these because I know that she's not going to make a mess. So I just keep them here. And if you guys see, they're pretty front and center. Let me close that. Okay, so now that takes us to the bottom shelf. Okay, so down here at the bottom is where I keep all of my paints. Um, so all of my tempera paints are here. Most of these I've gotten at either Lakeshore Learning or at Walmart. They carry the Sargent's brand at Walmart. So I've recently started buying those. On this side here, I have all of my acrylic paints. I like to buy the bigger size of like the white, the black, and sometimes the primary colors. I'm missing the yellow. I ran out recently. And then in here is where I keep all of my smaller acrylic paints. 
These are the two full ounce bottles. And I like these because they fit perfectly inside this container and it's just easier to manage. I also like to keep them inside this container because it's not as easy to access. And these paints, I don't allow the kids to just play with because they are harder to come off of clothing. So on this side here, I do have all of my pastels. I have my chalk pastels. Usually I like to keep the warm colors together and then the cool colors in the other one. Back here, this is how I like to keep my oil pastels. I usually like to crack them open and break them into little pieces because for art projects, I notice that for the kids, it's easier for them to work with smaller pieces rather than the whole chalk. Usually they tend to break anyway, so I'd rather just uh, take some time, unwrap them, and break them into little pieces anyway. I do have a newer set of oil pastels back here, which I am most likely going to open these all up and just kind of toss them in there also because it's just easier to keep. So in this little tub back here, I do have some of these uh, Melissa and Doug crayons. I like these for scraping when we do any kind of project where we get to um, scrape the color on um, because they're flat and obviously they have no wrapper, so I don't have to worry about unwrapping crayons. So that is what I keep those there for. I also have some Melissa and Doug watercolor paints. They're not the best, but for small little projects with the kids, especially with Evelyn, I don't mind them. These here are from Ikea. These work a little bit better, but they do have a little bit more of a chalky consistency. And then here I have another set of oil pastels, which I most likely will eventually also break them up and stick them in here also. These are some tempura cakes. I love working with tempura. tempura. I always say it wrong. I think it's tempura. Tempura cakes. They're kind of like watercolors, but I feel like they're easier to work with, especially for younger kids. And they're a little bit more pigmented these here and the reason I like them also because they're more pigmented I feel like working with younger kids with tempera cakes rather than watercolor they don't get their paper as wet and soggy because a little less because they're a little bit more pigmented I don't I feel like the kids don't feel like the need to really wet their um paper as much as working with watercolor this is why i like the tempera cakes and i always recommend having um i'll try to link these in the description box i tend to get a lot of questions on this tempera uh, palette because of the the tones they're a little bit more earthy and more flesh like so or you can mix more flesh tone colors i would say with the colors in this palette so i do like it i'll link it in the description box i tend to get a lot of questions on this one um my husband found these old these are watercolor markers or pens. He found them in his old art kit. Some of them still work. Some of them are kind of dry. And they're kind of like the watercolor color pencils. You can actually draw with them and then wet it. And it, they kind of look like watercolor. So under that tub, I have my two large tempura cake pans. Okay, so now these tempura cakes down here, I have all of my cool tones there. And then my warm tones up here. Um, these little cake pans, I can actually remove them. So if we only need to use certain colors, I could actually pop them out, but they're just easier to store in the little, uh, trays. And I'll try to see if I can link those in the description box. Also, most of these art supplies here, I purchased through Amazon. Okay. So now I'm just going to give you guys a quick little peek into my craft closet and some of the art supplies that I keep in here. A lot of the stuff that's in here, I don't just allow the kids to grab. So they do have to ask for permission. So, um, what I have in here is my cardstock. I also, this Evelyn is allowed to get whenever she wants. This is just scraps of construction paper. We always keep our scraps because we could always use them for other art projects. So this whole thing is just scraps. I do keep my 18 by 12 construction paper in here because we sometimes need it for art projects, but it's not something that I always just let the kids grab. A lot of this is just cardstock. Okay, and this container here is where I keep all of our watercolor paper. I don't just allow the kids to get the watercolor paper because it's a lot more expensive than regular drawing paper. So I do keep it in here. We only bring this out for certain art projects. I also always like to keep a little bit of that liquid starch in our schoolroom. We'd use that for a lot of art projects. Here, I just have uh, scraping plates. And um, I'm going to see if I can show you guys. So it's those kind of... Um, little plates that I've gotten either at Lakeshore Learning or the Dollar Tree. And we use those a lot for art projects when we do any kind of printmaking or anything like that. So I'm not going to go super in depth because a lot of it is just extras of stuff that I just can't fit out here. One of the other things that I really like to have is these little cups from the Dollar Tree for any kind of painting just to keep the water so it's spill proof. And then this kind of paper here. This I usually get at the Dollar Tree and it's a big roll of this paper. This is great for certain art projects, especially when it comes to uh, like multimedia type of art projects. I love having these rolls. 
Another thing I always like to recommend is having these little caddies from the Dollar Tree. These are great for painting. We usually use we usually use this side for water and then any like brushes or anything like that, we just kind of stick in here. Another thing I recommend for art and just keeping a little bit of a uh, mess free area is these trays from either the Target dollar or bullseye area or sometimes you can find them at Lakeshore Learning. These I love and if you guys can see ours are pretty well loved. These we got at the Dollar Tree years ago. I haven't seen them since but these are great to have just to kind of keep your little art area clean. I also like to always keep cardboard because we use a lot of cardboard for different art projects. That is my quick little look into my craft closet and some of the art supplies that we use. And again, if you guys have any other suggestions or if I missed anything, some a resource that you've used in the past, feel free and leave it down in the comment because I think this is all useful information for anybody that is looking for anything having to do with art. Thanks again and we'll talk to you next time.